third scientist. Today, we're going to discuss the different environmental concerns related to the use of fossil fuels, geothermal energy, and hydroelectric energy. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify the different advantages and disadvantages, cite ways to address the different environmental concerns, demonstrate care for the environment, and demonstrate civic consciousness, especially in waste generation and management. Last April 20, 2010, the largest marine oil spill took place in the Gulf of Mexico, 41 miles across the coast of Louisiana, USA, caused by the explosion of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig and subsequently sinking on April 22, 2010. That massive oil slick now covering some 600 square miles of the Gulf of Mexico, and it could start reaching the United States coast within hours. Let's talk about first the different energy sources and how it's produced, its usage, and its impact to the environment. Oil and petroleum are types of fossil fuels, thus, it's a non renewable source of energy. It is used by the world 38% in 2000 because it is easily transported and it is largely used by the transportation industry. However, it produces a lot of air, water, and solid waste pollutants as byproduct of refining and consumption. Natural gas is another type of fossil fuel, thus it's a non-renewable source of energy. It is used 20% of the world in 2000 due to its flexibility. It is used in different industries, largely in transportation, and most of all, in power generation. It produces fewer pollutants than oil and coal and lesser carbon dioxide emission. Coal is another type of fossil fuel, thus it's non-renewable. It is the primary resource for the electric power that we are using right now. It produces a lot of carbon dioxide and other air, water, and solid waste particles. Hydroelectric is a renewable source of energy. It's very clean and highly efficient. It can only be used in a certain climate and geography. It has low economic cost, however, it has high startup cost. Negative impacts to the environment include destruction of farmlands, dislocation of people, loss of habitat of certain organisms, and alteration of stream flows of rivers and creeks. Geothermal is a renewable source of energy of extracted heat from underground masses of Hatra. Its technology is still underdeveloped and can be geographically dependent, thus consumption is localized. 
It is highly efficient. However, it disrupts natural geyser activity. A successful energy future will depend on managing environmental impacts while keeping energy affordable. And this can only be achieved by formulating and implementing comprehensive energy and environmental policies with the cooperation of the international community in the form of treaties like the Kyoto Protocol. The following are considered priority solutions advocated by international communities led by the United States of America that are addressed in these international treaties. Priority solution number one, curbing global warming. Climate change is the single biggest environmental and humanitarian crisis of our time. We must act now to spur the adoption of cleaner energy sources at home and abroad. Priority solution number two, creating the clean energy future. Dependence on fossil fuels threatens our national security and is a major contributor to global warming and toxic air pollution. By investing in renewable energy sources such as the sun, wind, and biomass, we can help solve the energy and climate crisis. Priority solution number three, reviving the world's oceans. The world's oceans are on the brink of ecological collapse. We can restore marine vitality by ending overfishing, creating marine protected areas, and improving the way we govern our oceans. Priority solution number four, defending endangered wildlife and wild places. The destruction of our last remaining wildlands means the loss of vast troves of biological diversity, critical regulators of global climate, and irreplaceable sanctuaries. Priority solution number five, protecting our health by preventing pollution. We must reduce or eliminate the dangerous chemicals in the products we buy, the food we eat, and the air we breathe. Toxic chemicals in environments such as mercury, lead, and certain man-made chemicals have been linked to cancer, birth defects, and brain impairments. Reducing or eliminating the load of these dangerous chemicals in the products we buy, the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water we drink can help reduce the toll of human disease and suffering. Priority solution number six, ensuring safe and sufficient water. Clean and plentiful water is the cornerstone of prosperous communities. Priority solution number seven, fostering sustainable communities. The choices we make for where and how we live have enormous impacts on our well-being, economy, and natural environment. The government develops and advocates sustainable solutions for our communities. This has been your teacher, Mr. Jim Matthew Arnold saying thank you and God bless everyone.